Defining the derivative. This video is the first video of a series of videos about derivatives. In this video, we will construct a formal definition. Now that we have both a conceptual understanding of a limit and the practical ability to compute limits, we have established the foundation for our study of calculus, the branch of mathematics in which we compute derivatives and integrals. Most mathematicians and historians agree that calculus was developed independently by the Englishman, Isaac Newton, and the German, Gottfried Leibniz. When we credit Newton and Leibniz with developing calculus, we are referring to the fact that Newton and Leibniz were the first to understand the relationship between the derivative and the integral. The derivative extends the concept of the slope of a straight line to other functions. Let's begin our discussion by revisiting the slope. A straight line or line is an endless one-dimensional figure that has no width. It can be thought of as a connected set of infinitely many points. A straight line does not have any curve in it. The figure on the right is of a straight line, but the one on the left is not of a straight line. The one on the left contains curves. The word slope, gradient, incline, pitch, is used to describe the measurement of the steepness of a straight line. The slope of any line remains constant along the line. The higher the slope, the steeper the line. The blue line has a slope of 2, the green line has a slope of 6, and the purple line has a slope of 20. Observe that the green line has a higher slope than the blue line, and it's steeper than the blue line. The purple line is the steepest and it has the highest slope. Slope M of the straight line passing through the points P with coordinates, x1, y1, and q with coordinates, x2, y2, is obtained by dividing the difference of y coordinates, by the difference of x coordinates as shown in the formula. Slope can be calculated by using the coordinates of any two points on a line. The concept of the slope the rate of change of straight line could give important information. The slope of a mountain measures the steepness of the mountain. Also, for instance, the slope of a line could represent change in height over time, velocity, speed, or acceleration. In this instance, according to the graph, the object has traveled 20 meters in 5 seconds so the speed is 4 meters per second, as you see in this case, the slope gives the speed. Except for rare examples, most of the time graphs we find in applications are not straight lines, but still, we would like to know the rate of change for those graphs. Unfortunately for curved graphs, the rate of change varies from point to point. The slope formula for straight lines does not work in these situations. Example 2. The position of a car is given by ft equals t squared. Can we find the speed of the car after one second of motion? Let's try the slope formula. If t is equal to 1, then f1 is equal to 1. Therefore the point, 1 1, is on the graph. We need another point, if t is equal to 2, then f2 is equal to 4. Therefore the point, 2 4, is on the graph. Let's label the point, x1 y1 equals 1 1, x2 y2 equals, 2 4. Applying the slope formula. The slope m is equal to the difference of y coordinates y2 minus y1, divided by, the difference of x coordinates x2 minus x1. Let's plug in the values, y2 is 4, y1 is 1, x2 is 2, and x1 is 1. By simplifying we get a slope of 3. Observe that if 3 equals 3, then f3 is equal to 9. Therefore, 3 9, is on the graph. If we pick, x1, y1, equals 1 1, and, x2, y2 equals 3 9, and apply the slope formula. We get a slope of 4. Here we get two candidates for slope at t equals 1, but the car should have only one speed at t equals 1. How do we know the correct one? Actually, neither is correct. Straight lines have a constant slope, but this is not true in general. The slope formula of a straight line does not work for f t equals t squared. We cannot speak of the slope of t squared because it varies from point to point. In the face of nonlinear functions, the slope formula of a straight line fails. Mathematicians introduce a new concept. Derivative The derivative of a function, f at a point p, gives, the rate of change of the function, f at p. It extends the concept of the slope beyond the straight lines. Before, going into the discussion of the derivative, let's list two crucial concepts. A secant line, is a straight line joining two points on a function. The figure below shows the secant line connecting point, 1, 5.6, and point, 
3, 2.4. The tangent line, or simply the tangent, to a curve, at a given point is the straight line that just touches the curve at that point. The figure below shows the tangent line through the point, 1, 5.6. As you can see the line just touches the point, 1, 5.6. There can be infinite secants drawn through a given point, but there can be only one tangent line through a given point. The problem we faced, when we tried to find the speed at t equals 1, can be explained using secant lines and tangent lines. Observe that applying the slope formula, to points 1 1 and 2 4, we get the slope of the secant line, joining the points 1 1 and 2 4, which gives the average speed of the car in the time interval 1 2. Applying the slope formula, to points 1 1 and 3 9, we get the slope of the secant line joining the points 1 1 and 3 9, which gives, the average speed of the car in the time interval 1 3. We want to find the exact speed of the vehicle at t equals 1, the value of the speedometer at t equals 1. The slope of the tangent line to the graph at t equals 1 gives the exact speed at 1. We only know one point, on the tangent line. The slope formula requires two points. Derivative goes around this problem, by expressing the slope of the tangent line as a limit of slopes of secant lines. Let's look at the definition of the derivative. For the demonstration, we use a graph of a parabola, but the definition we construct works for any function. Suppose, we have to find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function fx at the point with x-coordinate x. Then the y-coordinate of this point is given by fx. We get it by plugging in the x-coordinate x into function f. We have to find the slope of the green tangent line, passing through the point with coordinates xf x. Let's label the slope of the tangent line by mt. We only know one point on the tangent line. We can't directly find the slope of the tangent line. Let's move to point h units to right on the x-axis. The point above this on the graph has x-coordinate x plus h and y-coordinate f x plus h. We get the y-coordinate by plugging in x-coordinate x plus h into function f. Consider the red secant line passing through points with coordinates x, fx, and x plus h, f, x plus h. Let's label its slope by mh. The slope m of the line passing through points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is given by the formula 1. Choosing x1, y1 to be x, fx, and x2, y2 to be x plus h, f, x plus h, and applying the slope formula given by 1 to red secant line, we get 2, where mh is the slope of the secant line. Simplifying 2 by cancelling out x in the denominator we get 3. As h approaches 0, the red secant line approaches the green tangent line. Therefore as h approaches, 0 the slope of the red secant line approaches the slope of the green tangent line. This could be expressed by the limit statement for. In 4 replacing mh, by 3 we get 5. For a given function f, at a point x, if the limit given by 5 is defined, we call it the derivative of f at x. The derivative gives the rate of change of x at point x. Also, the derivative gives the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at point x. The slope formula failed for nonlinear functions. The derivative extends the concept of slope to nonlinear functions. The definition of derivative expresses the slope of the tangent line as the limit of slopes of secant lines. This elegant idea is extremely important. Most of the functions we encounter in practical problems are differentiable. In the next videos, we would further explore the definition. We would show how to apply this definition to solve practical problems. 
including the problem of analyzing the motion of an object whose position is given by a nonlinear function.